Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do another text adventure creepypasta called Quest. Many people are familiar with Adventure, also known as Colossal Cave Adventure, one of the most famous text-based games of all time. During the late 70s, it was one of the most popular games of all time due to the freedom of choice it allowed, and its great atmospheric detail. In some venues, productivity would cease while people tried to solve the game. It could be found on many university computers, passed from one student to another and many phrases from the game have since entered the popular culture of the computer illiterate. However, there was another less commonly known game that was making the circuit of many of the same schools at the same time. This game, called simply Quest, remains to this day something of a legend spoken of rarely, but regarded by the few who know of it as, as by far the most impressive of the two. While the spread of adventure was due entirely to its popularity, Quest never seemed to come from anywhere. It would be found on systems that no one admitted to putting it on, turning up at seemingly random when people were looking for other software. Once found, the game would be available for a time, but the computer seemed almost to forget the location of the data at times, with the Quest game disappearing and reappearing like some kind of ghost ship in software form. The common explanation was simply that users would remove it due to its faulty coding, and others would put it on, wanting to play. The game itself was even more strange. It would start with the description of a scene outlining a minimal amount of backstory, a task that the player needed to accomplish, and some additional piece of information that could range from an inventory to a summary of a memory or dream. However, each of these elements could be different on each playthrough, and not only that, but players often claimed that it was impossible to enter a bad command, or according to some, a command could only be rejected when it was something that the player could not do in the present circumstances. The story seemed to be very open-ended, to the point that any actions the player would try invariably continue the player's journey, much like the open-world role-playing games of today. To date, there are only two known limitations that a session of quest was known to have. Firstly, there was no way to save their progress. Secondly, death was the end. This didn't simply mean a game over message. The quest program would crash if the player died, and took some time to get running again. This was only one of the problems the game was known to have. Though it had no iconic lines, as the dialogue wasn't consistent from one playthrough to the next, Quest was characterized by odd, occasionally stilted dialogue. It was commonly agreed that either Quest's programmer was not a native English speaker, or else the system used to generate the dynamic stories that Quest told had some strange failures in its grammatical rules. During play, the game would be prone to occasional freezes and slowdowns, taking up to 10 minutes to process the results of some actions. Players would complain that the computers with quests were prone to make, making strange noises while the game was running. The biggest thing that troubled players, though, was an entity that existed within the game. It wasn't a character or creature, but rather a behavior of the game itself, a way of presenting prompts as if attempting to engage the player directly that caused players to personify the game itself as the narrator, or sometimes the storyteller. Sooner or later, each player would be asked for an input outside of simply telling the game that, uh, what you wanted to do next. It was like the game would wanted you to tell the story with it, and indeed, some players claimed to have given detailed answers to these off prompts, and have their replies integrated into the story of their session. Eventually though, the game would begin to ask questions of a more personal nature, usually starting with the phrase, are you feeling lonely? From this point on, the game would become more psychological, focusing more on the feelings and motivations out of the player, and seemingly trying to evoke an emotional response. For example, one player claimed that after fleeing from spiders throughout the game, that after being asked if they were lonely, the game began declaring spiders everywhere. At some point while this is going on, the player, would make, the player will make what Quest considers to be a mistake, and the game will end. This is the only time players ever report getting a game over or a score, though it isn't clear what the maximum number of points actually is. People have reported still being able to find Quest on computers running operating systems as recent as Windows XP and Mac OS 9. In all this time, the experience players describe is still the same. Quest shows up randomly in a file search and brings up a game in a green on black display. However, with the advent of a more modern operating system, Tales of this mysterious game have become little more than stuff of legend. Indeed, many modern users laugh at the idea of such a game. Others, however, view the tale of Quest with suspicion and fear. Is it something to fear? Who can say? Questions about who made Quest, where it came from, and how it came to be on so many computers persist to this day. Perhaps, though, these questions will never be answered. Perhaps in this modern age, Quest has finally disappeared for good. Or maybe, just maybe, for whatever reason, 
quest is hidden away on someone's computer right now, just waiting to be found again. So, that was a short creepypasta. Quite a contrast from the last one, Antisonic.dll, right? But was it good? Yeah. First off, I didn't spot cliches or anything of the sort, to be honest. That could be because it's not really like other creepypastas in a sense, and I'll get to that in a second. But as far as cliches go, I didn't notice them as I read this, and even if they're in there, they wouldn't really hurt the experience like some other creepypastas. Now what do I think about this creepypasta? Well, I like how it really did feel realistic. Without any nonsense events that seem comedically implausible, the game gets transferred from computer to computer with just enough ambiguity to keep it eerie. A game that no one remembers installing or putting on any computer, a game that disappears and reappears, a game that... It seems somewhat self-aware, it could really be a number of things, you know, it could be some troll in the office, uh, hidden parameters in the application, plot, possible exploitation of the OS, malware, the works. It could be a number of possible things, or maybe something seemingly impossible. Another thing I really like, not just about this creepypasta, but about creepypastas in general, is the involvement of entities, or virtual entities if you will, in video games constantly watching, even talking to you at times when you least expect it. That feeling that someone is watching you without you knowing invokes a great feeling of fear, no matter what the circumstances are. This is why, at least to me, creepypastas like Funny Mouth, Console Me, or Ben Majora's Mask are really quite good in my opinion. Now, I, I think this could have been a lot longer, uh, a little longer, and could have been more pers uh, personalized to an individual, simply so that we could see more of the game and experience more of the phenomenon, such as the creepypasta Pale Luna, so that it could be more fleshed out and more effective than it already is now. Uh, that being said, I still think this is a decent creepypasta. It's realistic, but amb ambiguous enough to become e eerie. It could be a little longer, but for what it is, it's quite good. What would you rate this creepypasta, and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.